I made my Vespa electric. Now, if you clicked on this video, you're probably either one of two people. If you're the first type of person, you're stoked on electric stuff, you think this is really cool, you like old Vespas, greetings, welcome, good to see you. Second type of person, you hate people that ruin a classic vehicle with modern technology, and you're upset that I've messed this up. You're wrong. This is awesome, it's great, it's reversible. I'm gonna change your mind. Starting at the front, nothing up here has changed except for a hydraulic master cylinder. So step number one, we've already improved the bike. These have old drum brakes, which work, but with this, now we have disc brakes in the rear, so it stops on a dime, which is important when we do wheelies. Were you able to see that? Here's something else that's great about an electric conversion is you can let it sit for months at a time. It's winter, it's raining, California, but you let it sit for a long amount of time. You don't have to clean a carb. You don't have to let it warm up. Watch this. Open this up. Got a battery. Take our charge lead. It's ready to go. Don't believe me? Watch this. Closing it. No cuts. Come to the front of the bike. Turn our keyed ignition, which is also an improvement. Boom. We are ready to go. Running lights and everything. All LEDs now too. Okay, everything interesting and important is down here in our hub motor. The wheel itself is the motor. So not only do we get the most direct battery power to movement efficiency as possible, we also get incredible regen braking, meaning you're like a Tesla, single pedal driving or single throttle driving. You turn on the throttle to go, you let off the throttle and it slows itself down, all of which is tunable, if you don't like that. Uh, we've got disc brake on the rear. Most of my kits, I don't do this big wire wrapping around from the top of the headset, because it's ugly, but for me, for performance, it's the best to just have it up there. Most of my kits use the stock brake and you can't see any of it. Here's all our electronics, currently live, great, and waterproof. It's extra, but we can do it. And I think that's it. Stock headset, speedo, that all still works the same. Front brakes are the same. As promised, let's do some wheelies. It's a 72 volt system. It's like a Suron that's been totally maxed out and upgraded, and it's cheaper than a stock Suron. I'm not very good at them, but let's see if we can do this again. Okay, if you're that second type of person that still thinks I'm ruining classic vehicles, here is a Fiat. Totally stock, super fun, but slow and dangerous on modern roads. This can keep up with the traffic flying all the way out there super fast. So safer, more reliable, still space for this, but don't be mad at this. Okay, I've taken us up here to a back street where we can really test out the speed and try to do some wheelies on this thing. Um, the nice thing, which I always forget to mention, it's quiet. It's off right now. Now it's on. Let's test it out. We'll do a couple laps. We'll see what we get up to. Okay, I'm obviously not the best at doing wheelies, but the potential is there.
Okay, another nice thing about this, if you didn't just see from what I was doing, you don't have to shift, which I know is part of the experience, but without shifting, it just lets you focus on driving, which is pretty nice. Um, another thing too is right behind me, there's a bunch of houses. Right here is a school. Now, if this was an old two-stroke, I'd be making a ton of noise. It's daytime, I could probably get away with it. If I was to do this at nighttime, it's too loud. Um, I'm annoying people. But since this is so quiet, 10.30 every night, you hit the streets. The streets are quiet and safe. There's not people out texting and driving. And you could just go ride around and not bother any of your neighbors, which is super nice. Okay, final thing about this is I recently moved. I don't have a garage anymore. So the place where I get to store this is inside of my sprinter van. I can put it in my sprinter van. I can lay it on its side if I want. It doesn't spill gas or oil. But if I want to take the time and secure it correctly, which you should, I can drive around with the windows up in 100 degree weather and I'm not going to get asphyxiated from gas fumes or be in danger of starting a fire in my car because this is electric. think that's really all of my like big points about this if you're interested on how I made this comment below or whatever let me know and I can make a whole video of making another one of these because I make these all the time so yeah comment if you want to learn more about this I can make a whole video of how I do this the exact design process the welding of the swing arm parts list all that good stuff if you're interested in one message me on Instagram I make a kit and I sell it um, so you can convert yours too. Large frames, small frames, vintage Vespas only though. Enjoy this little walk around as I talk about the specs. This Vespa has a 72 volt, 20 amp hour battery, which is good for 30 miles of city driving and about 25 miles of highway speeds and burnouts and wheelies. Most realistically riding around, I get closer to 26 miles of uh, consistent range. It has a max 300 amp controller, but I have this tuned at 50% just for safety and for battery health. The math works out to be 8.1 kilowatts of nominal energy and then 15.1 kilowatts of peak discharge energy. Um, that is, it's basically the power of four Surons if you want to think about it that way. It has a top speed of 65 miles per hour and rear disc brakes. Total charge time is four hours from zero to 100%. And all of your battery specs are readable through a Bluetooth app.